tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. With Tony. With Tony. With Tony. And welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. I'm super excited because I have a fellow registered dietitian today. Her name is Lisa Moskowitz, and she is a registered dietitian and CEO of the New York, New York Nutrition Group. Um, and she's going to talk, we're, we're actually talking about nutrition and fertility, which I get a lot of questions about this. So I'm mm-hmm. super excited to kind of dive into that topic. But before we do that, Lisa, please just introduce yourself share who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, So I'm super excited to be here today. I love your message, Tony, and I think what you do is so powerful and helps so many people, which is why I'm so honored to be able to do this with you today. So I am uh, also a registered dietitian, and I primarily work in private practice. So a lot of my business is the one-on-one counseling, private counseling. I've been doing this for over 10 years. And at this point, I'm fortunate that my company has grown and we have about nine different locations throughout the New York City area. And I have about 16 registered dietitians in my practice as well. And so again, we do a lot of that one-on-one counseling and we see a variety of different things. But one of the things I've noticed is throughout my career and my life, I have changed a little bit about what I focus on as far as specialties. And, And one of those specialties I'll be talking about today, but that wasn't always something that I was so invested in. And I will also explain a little bit why as well (laughs) yeah well first of all I mean uh, you are very inspiring in that sense that like I'm this is I'm two years into my business and the fact that I don't know if that's something I want to do but the fact that you could potentially like I could grow my business to have like 16 dietitians under me and like and before we started recording you're like I want to do more media and I know that's definitely what I want to do yes it's just interesting to hear like the the different ways and like Um, I love that you've been doing this for for so long and you have so much experience. So it's just inspiring to watch. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yep, it it is. And and I hope that everybody feels like they can do it and not to be afraid of competition either, because even though there's a lot of us out there, whatever we do is going to be different and we will have the clientele and we all have our specific niche and our uh, talents and our skills. And Mm -hmm. there's, there's always clients that will flock to us. Um, and that's it. And that if you, if you work hard, you could definitely get there too. Totally. And I, and and not to sidebar too much, but I think, you know, registered dietitians as a whole, I think we can all agree that we're kind of tired of seeing people doing like the quick fixes and the bad diets. And so we have the same mission and the same message. So that's, so there is, to me, there's no competition. I think we need to come together. And that's why I interview so many registered dietitians because I just feel like we have a very similar message and the way I say it and the way you say it might be different, but the point is to get the person to achieve the same outcome. Yes. It's really awesome. Yes. Um, so, okay. So let tell us a little bit more about um, kind of your experience with infertility and kind of what that has taught you and why you've kind of geared more towards helping other women um, with, with their having yeah. issues with getting pregnant. Yes, absolutely. And I think it's, you know, can feel a little bit taboo and not a lot of people are comfortable talking about their experience with fertility and getting pregnant. Some are open books and we'll post it all over social media. And a lot of women can can feel, and even men can feel um, ashamed even or embarrassed about the struggles that they have. And so I am fortunate enough that I, I, I am, have the credentials that I have being a dietitian. I feel like I can help people more by being open and honest and transparent about what I went through because I know it does help other people. So basically what happened was I had got married in 2016. And I always knew that, you know, when I got married, I would want to have a family soon after because, you know, I would just be ready mentally, emotionally. I have a partner in life that I can do this with. I was at a place in my career that I felt comfortable. So I I figured this was the best next step for me in my life. And so I didn't even really think about it, to be honest. I was figured, oh, well, you know, we'll get married, we'll have our wedding and we'll try basically right after. Why, Why waste any time? I even planned certain things in my life around 
thinking I was going to get pregnant right away. And Mm -hmm. of course we know, you know, we plan and God laughs, like you just can't plan your life out with a lot of things, this being one of them. So I was on birth control pill for 10 years. And I think that's important to note as well, because I had really no idea what my body was doing hormonally. I didn't know about my cycle, my ovulation, 10 years is a long time. So basically all of my twenties, I was on birth control pill. And I figured as soon as we got married, I would stop the birth control pill. And then we would just, you know, start trying to have a baby and it would be super easy and everything would be great. Little did I know that was not the case at all. And when I first stopped the birth control pill, again, everything was still fine. My cycle was fairly regular, but I noticed that each month that passed and about two or three months, it kept getting longer and longer. I was going like 30 days and then, and then 35. And then eventually it was like 45 days. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. So I made an appointment with a gynecologist and she did an exam and she told me things that I've never heard before in my life that really turned my world upside down. Uh, mostly because, you know, it's, it's when you, when you hear anything that's going on there, that's wrong or abnormal in your body it could, it could be very hard to take, you know, you're, you're, mm-hmm. you start to, to wonder what's going to happen what's the outcome. What it, did I do something wrong? Did I do this to myself? And obviously the answer is no, you know, we are born the way we're born. So she did tell me that I had, uh, looked like that I had cystic ovaries, a hormonal imbalance happening and that it might be hard to get pregnant. And, I, at first I was just like, okay, I don't know. Like this is again, weird. I was almost in denial a little bit because I never heard that before. never had any issues before. So I took that kind of took me a while to process that. And in the meantime, we were still trying and it, a few more months went by and anyone that's been in, in my, in the sh- my shoes or trying to get pregnant, you know, that months can feel like years just waiting mm-hmm. for your next period to start so that you could ovulate and get, and, and try again that month because you only get one, one shot every 28 to 40 days, depending on the length of your cycle. And it could feel really, really long and gruesome. And so I, my anxiety was building up and I'm a very, uh, uh, not like type A personality, but with certain things, you know, if I want something, I, I go and get it, which probably is why, I, you know, what part of the reason where I am with my career. But when I want something, I, I really, I, I need it to happen. Like I'm like, I just, and so the longer the time went on, the more I wanted it to happen. So eventually after a few months of my husband basically telling me that I'm crazy every day, um, I said, let's go to, let me book an appointment with a fertility um, endocrinologist. And it was probably the best thing I did because not only was he, is he wonderful and, and amazing, but he gave me the reassurance I needed. And being a dietitian, we have, I think we both have like very scientific brains. I have to understand why something is happening before I can wrap my head around it and accept it. So he explained a lot of the science. He gave me statistics. He told me, he gave me a treatment plan. Much of what I do with, with my clients and what we do with our own clients is we just set up a plan. And that's kind of what I needed going forward to give me that peace of mind. So we just started with some of the basic, um, and he told me, listen, you, you could wait and you could try it naturally, or you could wait and it, nothing happens and you're back in, in my chair in a year from now. So if you really want, it, want a family, then why waste any time? And I actually mm-hmm. really appreciate that. And I agreed with that. I said, why am I wasting time? So uh, we, we started with the Clomid, which if you've ever been on, if anyone has ever been on it before knows that it's not very fun. Um, it's like having PMS 24 seven on steroids, oh, you wow. get bloated, you know, you get moody, you get irritable, your periods are really heavy. It just, it sucks. You know, it's not fun at all. And we did that, but we, we didn't do anything else besides that. So it just helped me get my period every 28 days. And that was it. And then about four or five months went by. And at that point I was like, okay, so it's almost, almost a year, not quite. And at that point I was like, listen, I, I, this is crazy. I can't, you could, you're only supposed to do certain amount of cycles of the Clomid anyway. And I was like mentally and physically, I'm exhausted and I don't want to keep doing this, but we, I want to to have a family, we need to do something else. So that's when the doctor suggested doing an IUI, which is basically like getting turkey basted is the only way to explain it. It's like taking a a baster and just putting it inside you. And, and that's, and that's how it works, but you have to stay on the fertility medication. Um, and so we did it, we did one round and, um, I got my period again as normal and I was, you know, a little upset. It was a heavier period, but nothing, I didn't think anything of it. I went and I got the blood work, which you're supposed to do on day two of your cycle. And they called me back the next day and they said, well, your H 
HCG, which is your pregnancy hormone, was actually a little bit higher than normal. It's possible that you had a biochemical pregnancy, which basically means a very early miscarriage. Like it basically means that the egg was possibly fertilized by the sperm, but it either never implanted or implanted. And then it let go really quickly. It wasn't a viable a viable egg. So it's your body's way of kind of getting rid of any pregnancy that might not be healthy or viable early on. Mm -hmm. So, um, at, at part of that was, you know, obviously it was, it was disappointment, which is something I was used to at that point point. just getting disappointed. And part of it was also a little bit of like, okay, well, at least something happens, you know, which was better than, than the past, not 10, 11 months of nothing happening. Mm -hmm. So we did another round and, um, I didn't feel any different that month. And people say, oh, you know, you'll know, you'll feel this, that. I can't say anything was different except that my boobs are probably just really, really swollen and they hurt more than I've ever noticed before. That was the only thing I could possibly say that was a little bit different than any other time. Mm -hmm. So I ran out of pregnancy tests, of course. So I couldn't even use pregnancy tests, but I had ovulation test kits left. And I know that if an ovulation, if you're pregnant, it can mimic um, when you're ovulating the same hormone. So I took the ovulation test and I, I kind of was just like, whatever. At that point, I was like, whatever it is, what it is, like let God decide my fate. Mm -hmm. And I let it sit in the bathroom and then I came back a few minutes later, I turned it over and it's a smiley face. And I was like, okay. So still didn't want to get too excited because it wasn't an actual pregnancy test. Um, I said to my husband, I was like, um, I think I might be, I think I might be pregnant because this is like, it was very nonchalant. It was very calm about it. And again, I didn't want to get my hopes up. And he was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Which was his response. It wasn't like, you know, the movies where you're like jumping and excited. It was just very much like, let's proceed with caution. Cause we don't know mm -hmm. yet. And I know the risks of miscarriage and all of that are very high. Um, especially with where I was at with the pregnant, with, with, with my medical history. So I, I go to the doctor's office and we do the blood test and they, t and they call me back and they say, yes, your HCG is very high. In fact, it's on the higher end of what's normal for where you're at. So the next step is just come back in, in at five weeks and six weeks and we'll do a sonogram and see what's going on. So we go back and the doctor, I come with, I go with my husband this time who, for the most part, I was going on my own because there was a lot of visits to the doctor. It was like constant and he had to work mm -hmm. and I, I didn't want to drag him all the time. So finally, he, so this one time he came with me, um, we do the sonogram and the doctor says to me very, very calmly, almost like a little disappointed. And I, and I understand why. And I'll tell you why in a second. It's like, oh, all right, well, we were trying for one baby and we got two, um, <laughs> And I almost like in my head, I like knew it because you go for a sonogram when you're ovulating. And I saw that I had three eggs that had matured. So I know that uh -huh. the, the chances of them all, there's a possibility when you have three eggs that all three could even implant. Right, right. So two ended up implanting and that was it. It was a thankfully a very healthy pregnancy. I had really couldn't complain. And at that point I was if I could complain, I, I didn't want to, I was so excited, you know, just the fact that it worked mm -hmm. and I was so happy and thrilled and, um, and, and that was it. And I really think that just going through all of that, it made me a, a better person for sure. It made me more patient and it made me appreciate my body a, a lot more because that year mm -hmm. of trying and getting that diagnosis, it makes you feel, you know, really bad about yourself. It's a lot of women deal with, with body image issues on the outside. And this was a whole different ball game. This was like body image issues, but on the inside, mm -hmm. like not like, you know, not, not, not liking what you're, what you know is happening in your body. And it's, it gets mm -hmm. in the way of what you really, if what you really want, if you really want something so bad, you know, you're the one that's getting in the way of that. It's just hard to process that. So it was a, it was an emotional roller coaster for sure. Um, mm. And whether it's one month that you've been trying or five years, I don't even think that makes a difference to, to say how hard it is. It doesn't get much harder and it doesn't get much easier. It's just, it's hard no matter where you're at, um, especially if you're someone that just really is so ready to have it. Yeah, so. definitely. It sounds like this is something you were looking forward to and you almost didn't even think it was going to be no, you know, as challenging as it was. Thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I'm, I'm happy to hear how old are your kids now? So they're, twins. they're twins and they're 20 months old. So they will be two oh, yeah. in a few months and yes, and they're great and we love them. They're both boys. Um, so we have our hands full, uh, yeah. but 
again, I, I think, I think going through that journey, it makes you more appreciative of a parent, but at the same time, you know, you have still can have like that guilt with like, I should appreciate, you know, there's times where it's really, it's really hard. Parenting is not easy, no matter who tells you it is. Um, mm. but I do think at the end of the day, I, 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 I appreciate everything so much more. I appreciate the pregnancy more. I actually like one of those people that I didn't mind. I actually love being pregnant. Um, especially just like the clothes and, you know, the fact that you don't have to worry about like your stuff. It's like the one time in your life where you're like showing off your protruding yeah. belly and like proud of it and yeah. you know, feel good about it. So there was definitely some things that were hard about it, but for the most part, I, I, I love being pregnant just because of, I think how hard it was for me to get there. It felt really hard to get there. And I know there's women yeah. out there who cry way longer than I do and have gone through it for years. And like I said, I think no matter what, it could be just as difficult, um, no matter where you are in that stage, but, but, and some people can get pregnant right away, literally one month, two months. I have, I have really close friends that, that one, they're not even trying yet. They're like, Oh, I'll just, you know, we'll just do whatever for a month or two and they get pregnant right away. And then I have a lot of friends and a lot of clients too, that it takes much, much longer. And it, um, it, it could take up to, you know, up to a year or more time uh, everybody has different journeys. And of course, social media doesn't really help these days because you can sign on and just see like positive pregnancy tests. We're due, we're having a baby. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to, it's hard to see that when you're going through, I almost had to deactivate my Facebook account. I really was like, so about to deactivate it because I couldn't take yeah. seeing somebody else post a pregnancy and I want to be happy for them, mm -hmm. but it's hard to be happy for them. And I think it's okay if you're not happy for everybody around you because you want it so yeah. bad. It's okay to feel that way. Totally. Totally. Well, thank you for sharing your story. Yeah. I think that was really great. I think a lot of people will definitely appreciate the honesty there. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I, I'm wondering, cause you know, as a dietitian, yes, I'm sure you have, you know, you have all the knowledge when it comes to the foods to eat to help with fertility. Yes. I'm curious if you changed anything in your eating habit um, during that time. Yes. Uh, maybe the research, I'm sure you did. I, I know. I have to. <laughs> oh my God, I was glued. I was glued yeah. to my computer, like so, literally. <laughs> so let me, uh, so yeah, so maybe just kind of start with, did you make any personal changes? And then kind of what did you come up with in your research of what can potentially help with yeah. um, fertility? Or if maybe that's not true at all. Definitely, definitely. And so there is for sure research out there. And I think the most important thing is, you have to be patient with yourself. You don't have to make a doctor's appointment if it's only been a few months, because like I said, it can take, it can take a lot longer than that. Um, I think most doctors don't even really aren't even concerned unless it's been a year since you've been trying. Yeah, so if it's within, that, within that year, yeah. So if it's within that mm -hmm. year, you know, don't, don't worry. Um, yeah. But if you're really anxious and eager, like I was, you know, there's no harm either in, in making an appointment to get, to get checked. Um, Checked, uh, checked out just to see well, what's going on. you also had an irregular period after you went yes. off the birth control. So you definitely, if that's if it's like, you had right, just under ovaries, like you definitely needed to be seen for other reasons yes. as well, you know? Right. And that is a sign. So if you do have irregular cycles, that's definitely a sign that something could be going on. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons why it could take a little longer to get pregnant. So for me, it was a hormonal imbalance, but there's other reasons why sometimes it's thyroid. So uh, that's also has to do with hormones, of course, but there's mm -hmm. um, also that there could be also sometimes um, a lot of some women find too, if they have um, undiagnosed celiac or any sort of autoimmune condition that could also play a part as well. And then of course, don't forget it takes two to tango. So it might not even be you, it could be your partner. And they're not always the first ones to jump up and want to be proactive about it. If they are wonderful, but, but males specifically aren't always so proactive about it. But if it's been a while, don't just assume it's you. It could also be him and it's good for him to get checked out as well. Get a sperm count analyzed and just see what's going on with that. So as far as what to do nutrition wise, I for sure was doing everything I possibly could because I really wanted it. If that wasn't obvious enough, I was really, really um, determined to get there. So for me, a lot of the research that I did personally was more about how to deal with this hormonal imbalance. And also there might be people listening that aren't anywhere near where they want to be like they aren't ready to, to, to try to conceive, but they are dealing with other hormonal imbalances and they want to just feel better. So mm -hmm. There are definitely things you can do. I, I do think that it's worth making changes in your diet. There are studies that show that how you eat, how healthy you eat, how balanced you eat um, can for sure help with 
uh, rates of fertility rates. So Mm -hmm. there is the science there to back that up. It's not just like, you know, hearsay. So I think number one is, is you do want to start treating your body as if you were pregnant already, which means cutting down, if not cutting out alcohol, and you're not supposed to drink at all when you're pregnant, but you might Mm want to think about cutting down on alcohol, cutting down on caffeine. Um, if you're, if there's any recreational drugs, that's something else you want to consider because you could get, especially if you're anywhere close to getting, wanting to get pregnant, you get pregnant at any time and you don't want that in your system Mm -hmm. as much as, but you want that out of your system as much as possible. So that's one thing you do also want to start taking a prenatal vitamin. If you're anywhere close to wanting to conceive as well, something with folic acid, folic acid is probably the most important thing, vitamin you need. One of the B vitamins that you need during pregnancy to prevent neural tube defects and there's also studies showing that it can help with male fertility as well, like a folic acid supplement and zinc. So those two things are really good for men, but also really important for, for women to take that folic acid. 400 is minimal. 800 is, is great, is, is, is optimal and probably the max you need, 800 micrograms a day of folic acid. I really like Garden of Life, uh, the prenatal. I like them as a company. It's it's verified by Consumer Labs, so it's tested, and uh, we know what's on the label is actually in the supplement, so that's good. And I don't work for Garden of Life or anything like that. I just really like the <laughs> red. Um, so that's number one is is start to to cut back on those certain things. I also think it's important to know that you want to if you're not only if you're if you're eating the wrong things, but at the same time, if you're somebody that is dieting or trying to lose weight or cutting back on calories or cutting back on carbs, that could also negatively impact your ability to conceive as well. So if you're doing any restrictive crash dieting, that's not always the best thing. Yes, we hear that your BMI should be a certain point for healthy conception, healthy pregnancy, uh, have a BMI under 25. But if you're body fat is too low or your calorie intake is too low, that also can be an issue. Number one, you're not going to get the nutrients you need from your diet. If it's under, I mean, really anything under 13 could be restrictive, but I I say definitely nothing under 1200 calories, Mm -hmm. even if you're trying to lose weight, um, is that's also very important. And I don't think many people talk about that, but, um, and a few of the biggest things that we know for fertility are definitely having a ton of plant-based foods. In fact, there are some studies showing that more plant-based diet is better for conception and fertility. So having tons of fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, um, even tofu as protein. So the studies that really did look at diet and fertility found that those who consumed more red meat, and uh, sugary processed foods and trans fat foods had more sh- trouble getting pregnant than those who had more of a plant based diet with less artificial ingredients, less sugary foods, and just more antioxidant and fiber rich foods was increased the chance of, of conception. So that's something that's also important to know. Um, and as far as dairy, there's actually studies showing that full fat dairy is better when you're trying to get pregnant. Um, and we know that fat free or low fat dairy are not only not necessary, even though you might save on calories, you're getting more things in the, in the dairy that you're getting more additives. And then you need some of the fat to absorb the vitamin D and dairy. So full fat dairy, and also a lot of people associated full fat dairy with increasing cholesterol and heart disease. And that also at this point is not proven anymore that the fat and dairy is bad for your heart. So more reasons why you don't need to do fat-free cheese, fat-free yogurts, do the 2%. If you're, you know, you don't ready to go to the full, commit to the full fat of the 4%, do 2% Greek yogurt, do reduced fat cheese. Or if you're up for it, you could just do the regular thing. And at least those calories in there, even if it's a little bit more, they're, they're calories that are going to keep you full and satisfied. So it, it means something. It has more staying power. So those are probably the biggest things to keep in mind. And then, of course, then you want to look at special conditions. So again, if, if you were diagnosed with any hormonal imbalances like PCOS, um, you may even um, want to get tested for celiac disease, like anything that could potentially uh, affect your body um, if there's an underlying insulin resistance. That also can, can affect how easy it is for you to get pregnant. 
So you do want to make sure, rule all that out, especially if you've been trying for a long time or a few months and you have irregular periods or any symptoms. I mean, you know your body the best. So if you know that something doesn't seem right and it's off, just go to the doctor. You have nothing to lose. Have them do a full blood workup, a sonogram, and talk to somebody about it. But if it is that, there's also some research showing that and I don't like to throw this out too much because it doesn't really help everybody. And I think everyone's so quick to, to take this out of their diet when they don't need to. But there is some evidence showing that a gluten-free diet can help. And if you have PCOS, sometimes the gluten and dairy free diets have shown to improve symptoms of PCOS and to help regulate periods. So Again, I, I don't think that's for everybody and it doesn't mm-hmm. help a lot of people that do it. Then they, A lot of people that are doing that and cutting that out of diet don't necessarily need to, but yeah. some people it can help. Well, so I guess the question always, I'm always like thinking about all the reasons why it's never the reason why we think is usually the reason behind it. So right. my guess is, is like, if someone goes gluten-free, they're probably cutting out some of like refined carbohydrates that they normally, you know, wouldn't have. And now instead of having you know, um, bread with their dinner, they're having like a sweet potato. And so yes. I almost, as long as they're right. choosing whole food gluten-free options versus like processed gluten-free options, then I can see why that would be beneficial. Yes, yes, absolutely. You know? and, with, and with PCOS, with PCOS, a lot of times the issue is the underlying insulin resistance. And so to exactly what you said, if they're cutting out gluten, sometimes they're cutting out the sweets and the bread, the white flour breads and the bagels and the croissants and the sugary cereals. And so, mm-hmm. yes, that for sure will can help with not only just fertility, but also the way they're feeling physically, mentally, right. um, any symptoms that they have. So absolutely, that can help right there. So that's why I'm saying you don't necessarily need to look at gluten as the, as the culprit and as the offender. You first want to make other changes to your diet before you jump to cut out anything like that. First, try to Mm -hmm. just stay away from the refined, too much refined flours. You can have a little bit. Too much refined Mm -hmm. flours and sugars and look for more high fiber, antioxidant, plant-based rich foods uh, like fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts and whole grains, et cetera. And, Mm -hmm. um, and see how that how that works for you, and then and then if you're still noticing, like you know what you you're you can try this, you can try cutting out other things. You're not happy with your results yet. You might also want to do it under a supervision, right? So maybe yeah. it's good to meet with a dietitian, a registered dietitian, and have them monitor you and come up with a plan that makes sure that you're not um, losing out on any nutrients by cutting out anything in your diet. So that's also important. And then of course, there's, there's all these supplements too out there, especially with, with hormonal imbalances and conception and regulating your cycles. And some of them do have a lot of research behind them. So some of them are, are, are researched and, and while some, you know, might be more anecdotal, like people just say it helps them. And so we just believe it. Um, others are, do have some also scientific research as well. Um, and so the, uh, biggest ones I think are the ovocetol, uh, sorry, it's actually inositol, I N O S I T O L. And that's something that's supposed to really help with women with hormonal imbalances, with regulating cycles. And, um, you know, for women with, with PCOS specifically or insulin resistance specifically, it can, um, make it harder to, to, to lose weight because of that insulin resistance. So it can even help a little bit with that. And then there's berberin and then there's also, which is supposed to kind of mimic metformin, um, which some women are prescribed when they're trying to get pregnant, um, mm-hmm. as something that might help. So you might not need to jump to metformin. You could try the berberin. And then there's also Vitex, which is supposed to help regulate cycles. So those are probably the biggest three things. And this is really more specifically for women with hormonal imbalances or PCOS that are trying to get pregnant versus like Mm -hmm. anyone that doesn't have these issues that's struggling to get pregnant. This is, I don't think these are necessarily going to help them, but the other things I mentioned definitely can. So, and then lastly is the moderate exercise. So you don't want to over-exercise, right? We don't, we know that's not great for anything, but not doing any activity or being very sedentary can also be, uh, can also affect your body and your health. And so it's good to do even just like walking more every day. I tell my clients, like even just like walk to work instead of taking the subway. If you live in a city, um, Mm -hmm. take the stairs instead of the elevator, 
anything like that, every little bit can add up and help. So I think those are the really the biggest things to focus on. Other than that, you can read things, hear things, see things, see products being advertised for fertility. And all I can say is I know it's a very, it can be a very vulnerable time when you're trying to get pregnant and it's not happening. And so before you buy into all of that, if you have questions, if you're not sure, um, it, it helps to see a dietitian or talk to a dietitian mm-hmm. ab- about it before you waste your money or even at worst, put something in your body that can be harmful and that you don't need mm-hmm. and that isn't regulated and we don't really mm-hmm. know what's in that supplement you're taking. So that's just my um, my sort of fine, like warning with that stuff. Yeah, I, especially especially supplements. And I think anybody yes. who's listening to this podcast, hopefully, unless they're new, but, you know, they kind of know that, you know, definitely supplements are kind of like the – the icing on the cake when and use it when it's appropriate and when it's yes. reliable and so Good first, uh, Good first. Yeah. yeah yeah um so oh my god this is so great so we basically obviously fix if there's anything underlying going on we want to fix that the medical condition yes. could be the root cause we want to address that um adopting healthier habits honestly everything you just said is not much different than i think what anyone should be doing which is you know, eating more plants, eating, you know, more lean, lean. And I don't think even too, it doesn't have to be fully plant-based in the sense, like you don't have to be completely right. vegan. Actually having um, a dietitian coming on, um, I don't know if she's a dietitian, but someone who specializes in plant-based nutrition. Oh, cool. I'm interviewing her next week. And it's just interesting because I think even the term plant-based is so broad. We don't really have like yes. a clear definition of like what that actually is. And so it doesn't it's mean so that you new. don't want to yes. have meat. Like you can still eat your meat. It's just when you look at your plate, it's predominantly vegetables and you can also sometimes have tofu. And it doesn't, I, that's yeah. my definition of it. <laughs> yes. I always say plant-based doesn't mean only plants. It just means right. it's based on plants. So you could still have yes. fish and chicken and eggs and dairy. And yeah. you shouldn't be afraid of that because they give us so many good things like B vitamins and zinc, a lot of things that are also important for fertility and just general well being and our immune system and our energy levels. So yeah. I, I am not um, a, a, somebody that pushes only plant based diets by any means because right. we know with our, you know, with the knowledge we have, with the training we received, that if you have some good quality animal foods in your diet, it can, to- it can easily fill in the gaps and totally prevent nutrition deficiencies. It's just easier to get all your nutrients and it can keep you more full to have like a lot of my, my vegan clients and vegetarian clients. Once they start cutting out animal proteins, I almost always have them come back in the office and say like, if they want to try it on their own and I support it, even though I don't promote Mm it. Um, Mm -hmm. I always hear them say I'm hungrier. I'm craving more carbs. I'm craving more Mm -hmm. sugar. Some of them notice Mm -hmm. weight gain and, and weight gain that they're uncomfortable with. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's interesting that I, you know, everybody is so anti animal foods, especially with the Netflix documentary Game Changers. Everyone's yeah. like on a whole tangent with mm-hmm. the vegan movement. And I, I think there's parts of it that are great, but I don't think you need to be completely vegan to be healthy. Right. By any exactly. Way. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, all right. Well, this has been amazing. Is there anything yeah. else that you want to add? Um, anything we didn't talk about that you feel like you need to discuss? Yeah. I mean, I think just like the bottom line is you don't really know. It could be very hard no matter where you are in your in your journey if you're trying to get pregnant. And even if you're not, I know a lot of people, women and men, can worry about, well, when that time comes, am I going to have any issues? Is it going to be hard for me? And the only thing I can really say about that and what I've just kind of, what's helped me get through it too, is just like that like God has our, his plans for all of us. So mm-hmm. if you're not pregnant yet, if you are trying, it just means that it's not meant to be your baby yet. And just remember that it's all, it happens when it's supposed to happen, when it's meant to be, when it's meant to be your baby, it will happen. Um, try to, try to find some positives in it. Like I know it's not the best, but honestly, I'm just going to be real here. When it when it didn't happen for me, I was like, okay, well, we have a wedding next weekend, so at least I could have a few cocktails and not yes. worry about it. I could go out with my friends and not, you know, or I, it's another month that I'll deal with morning sickness if that's a thing. So um, try to just remember that as much as possible. Like I said, I know it's so difficult. I had never had any idea before I went through it myself that it, it can be a treacherous and emotional roller coaster to say the least, but 
Um, you just have to try to stay positive, look at the bright side. And at least we're so blessed these days and there's so many technology and resources and options. And mm-hmm. we were talking about before insurance can cover a lot of these. So if you're worried about mm-hmm. finance, it be expensive, but a lot of times insurance does cover a lot of, a lot of, um, fertility treatments. So yeah, uh, just try to stay positive as hard as it is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Lisa. This has been awesome. Um, definitely please share where people can find you and definitely call yes. out your Instagram pages because they're both phenomenal. Like yeah. if you're looking for a reliable resource that someone to follow on social media, your pages are great. So thank you, Tony. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So my handle is Lisa M as in Mary nutrition. So it's just my name, Lisa, my last initial M is in Mary and then nutrition. And then my practice page is NY nutrition group, which is the name of my practice, New New York nutrition group. And that's it. Perfect. All right. And I'll put those in the show notes. Thank Thank you so much for coming on Lisa. Thank you guys for listening. As always, this is Tony Maranucci, a registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. Mm -hmm.